I've spent the last couple of years carrying two phones. The small one has always been my communicator, since large phones can be uncomfortable to handle with one hand, and the large one has always been my media powerhouse, since consuming content is always better on a large display. But what if a company decided to do something different? Instead of making you choose either or, what if a company made a phone that could serve both needs just fine? I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our full review of the LG G6. To describe the LG G6 in a word, I think versatile would be the most fit. I mean, seriously, what else can you call a product that's designed to solve specific needs without affecting core experiences? And by needs, I actually mean the possibility of handling a phone with one hand, all the while being large enough to help you enjoy a good video while you're on the go. To achieve this, we have a few genius design moves. The bezels have gotten reduced significantly, providing an insane 80% screen to body ratio. The display became taller, now two by one in aspect ratio. And since they went fancy, why not throw in some curves to the corners of the display in order to make it stronger in case of a fall? Actually, by fancy, we're talking about this build. The aluminum trim is actually slimmer than it seems, but it provides an amazing sense of grip when you hold the phone. And the back, now glass, has managed to fit a sizable battery in addition to dual cameras. All this flush to the chassis and even including IP68 water and dust resistance. The overall effect is surreal. On the table and in the hand, this phone feels small, but trust me, this is not really a camera trick. What hasn't been so surreal, at least in the opinion of some, is the choice for internals. We have a Snapdragon 821 processor with 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of expandable storage, all which are either steps back or adjacent to devices like the OnePlus 3T, which cost a lot less than this phone. Many people are complaining of the fact that this phone did not wait for the Snapdragon 835, but if you ask me, I really haven't complained one bit about the performance in nearly a month of using both the demo unit and this final product. Whether it's your standard daily usage or the most demanding of games, I have yet to find this phone stutter with anything, so I think that waiting for the Snapdragon 835 would have just been a waste of time. My favorite thing about this phone is honestly the display. We have a 5.7 inch Quad HD Plus panel at 2880 by 1440 that LG is dubbing its full vision display. This is still IPS technology, but now capable of Dolby Vision and HDR10, which is now available on certain Netflix content. Color accuracy is top notch, and if your content is of 18 by nine aspect ratio, you will feel right at home. Sadly, applications like YouTube have not yet been enhanced to enjoy this new resolution, but we have a feeling this is not gonna take that long. And the second thing that I enjoy about this panel is the always on mode, which makes a return and adds extra functionality that we did not see with its predecessor. This 18 by nine or two by one aspect ratio is actually quite practical for LG's new UX 6.0, which takes advantage of the fact that you've got two perfect squares at the top and the bottom. Most of the user interface is designed as a split of areas at the top and the bottom as a result. And since this phone runs Nougat, split window multitasking actually feels like if it was designed for this particular aspect ratio, which is genius. LG continues to push for extra functionality by adding navigation buttons for the notification tray. But you know what's missing here, LG? A menu button or a context button or whatever you wanna call this thing. Because to be honest with you, I rarely ever use the Q slide option or the capture button. And the biggest problem about having a tall display like this is those hamburger menus at the top, which are definitely not reachable with one hand. And about everything else, I love how dense the LG launcher has become. And yes, if you'd prefer the option for the app tray, it is also here. When it comes to the experience of using the G6 as my daily driver, I'd give this phone a solid A-. Phone calls are loud, and callers said that I sound clear. And Juan is very optimistic about the audio quality of this phone through the headphone jack, even without the quad DAC that's offered overseas. Sadly for me, I just cannot get over the lack of stereo speakers. 
Yes, I do agree. This is probably one of the loudest single firing speakers I've ever heard, but that's until you muffle this thing, which just hinders the user's Piece experience. Software will go back and revisit with those changes. And that same rating is what I'd give to battery life. Our final review unit still runs on Android 7.0, and since it still lacks the battery enhancements of 7.1, the device barely reaches a day of moderate use through this power pack. Quick Charge 3.0 does come to the rescue for a quick top-up, and yes, if you're in the US, you also get the option of wireless charging. Now, where I'd give this phone a solid A+, and even an added extra plus if I could, is with the camera experience. LG has spent the last two years impressing with their camera performance, and the G6 has taken what was already good to a great level. This year, we have dual 13 megapixel cameras, both sporting the same sensor, the primary of f1.8 aperture at 71 degrees of field of view, and the secondary at f2.4 aperture at 125 degrees. This creates the illusion of optical zoom, but instead of getting closer to a subject, it allows you to go farther. It became really convenient in my recent trip to the Vatican and then Barcelona, as there are certain areas where you simply can't step away to get a better shot, and where the G6 just solved this need brilliantly. The added megapixels of the wide-angle camera and the reduction of the field of view have allowed me to trust it just as much as I would trust the primary, with great color saturation and detail, in addition to less barrel distortion than what you get with the LG V20 or the old G5. The selfie camera can also be used in a wide-angle mode of 100 degrees of field of view, or a standard crop depending on your needs. And if you want to step things up a notch, I would highly suggest you watch Juan's real camera review, mainly because he praises these manual controls, and I actually do too, particularly because they finally make it to video. And speaking of video, this is another area where having a wide-angle lens makes filming anything more practical even if stability is mixed depending on what camera you're using. Overall, the versatility of the LG G6 is unquestioned. This is a phablet that feels like a standard smartphone, with a set of cameras that adapts to your surroundings, and with looks that'll turn heads no matter where you go. Even with its minor shortcomings, it's really hard to even compare the G6 against any other phone. The fact of the matter is that this phone is currently on a league of its own, so much so that it's already putting a lot of 2017 competition to shame. Really, there is only so much I can tell you on a video. This is one of those products that I highly suggest you go to a store and experience for yourself, and also one that I would highly suggest you buy. Bravo, LG. Folks, just like this, we've got more reviews in the pipeline, so make sure you follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button down below for more videos like this one. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.